Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday Night Nightcap. Tonight's Nightcap, I do a lot of machine work on a, on a new advice I've been given. Um, a record, number 25 vase with a broken jaw, or at least some broken studs. Um, I get the broken studs out, machine a new jaw. I show quite a lot of that. Today I've been away at a, like, it's like a steam open day at Beamish Museum. Uh, Richard wasn't there, Richard's been at Blackpool with the, the Sentinel steam wagon. I met up with a guy there called Donald. Um, Donald has a Stanley steam car. Um, he showed us basically how it works, what the controls do, and then I was fortunate enough to go for a ride in it. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. If I get time, I'll edit some of that and put some of that in towards the end. I'll certainly put a little bit in, but there's quite a bit of footage there. It might be well worth a uh, video all of its own through the week. I want to do the draw for the two Miller Cutlass from last week. I might as well do that now because Debs is at work and has only me here. Okay, so I'll have a, a look in here. I'm getting roughly 50 names a week to go into the bucket, so it's I'm needing a bigger bucket before long. Right. We've got one. And it says Brian Coyle. You can see that. Right, Brian, all you've got to do is email me your post address and I'll get that posted off to you this week. I'm going to do another draw this week. Uh, this week, once again, is going to be for two mill and cutters. They're both 12 mill cutters, both brand new, but one of them has been, it appears to be hand ground into a ball end mill and cutter by putting chamfers on or by putting like, a convex edge in. Concave edge. Next cave, concave edge. Anyway, that's going to be the, the prize for this week's draw. Straightforward 12mm cutter, brand new. And the other one is also a 12mm, but it's been ground to a ball end shape on the end. If you want to enter, as usual, all you've got to do is send me an email, that's my email up there. Email with your name, your name goes into the bucket, if you're drawn out of the bucket, I'll post it off anywhere in the world, completely free of charge. It's just a little way of me saying thanks very much for all the help and support I've had. And I've actually got people now sending this parcels with odds and ends in, purely and simply to use in the giveaway. Obviously, if I haven't got the particular item, I'll keep it, but it's point just me having a 40 or 50 milling cutters all the same size. I might as well give some away. If you win them and you haven't got a milling machine, give it to somebody else. Anyway, that's going to be the prize for this week's draw. As a lad that calls into work and um, gets the old bit of scrap off us, and he's always on the lookout for decent bits of engineering tackle uh, when he's in scrap yards. He called in last week with this. It's a uh, record number 25. 6 inch engineer's vase. It's a sort of vase that there was millions of these passing on the workbenches in shipyards and factories all over the country. This one suffered from the hands of someone in as much as the chances are the screws have come loose in the fixed jaw, the jaw has been come up and been lost and they've carried on using it and they've really gnawed this face up. The rest of the vase is in good condition, the screws in good condition, the nuts in good condition, the quick release mechanism works fine. So what I'm going to do is mill this flat, mount on the machine, mill that flat, get the two broken screws out, and I'm going to make a new jaw for it. I've got some D2 tool steel, I'll just make a flat jaw out of that. Um, a set of jaws for this vase, they're a fortune, and I think about £75 for the two proper 6 inch jaws. I could do with a better vase in the top workshop anyway, so that's what I'm going to do. I'll be able to mount it, just on the two mounting boards. Set this up, run nice and square and true, and just clean that face up. It's certainly worth spending a bit of time doing it up. Um, these things last forever, they really are a, a very strong, robust bit of kit. Uh, unlike quite a lot of the important devices, these are the business, so to speak.
It will be rather foolish to try to run the clock gauge along that face because it looks like it's been hit with a chop nax. But I must make sure that this face is parallel to that face and there's an easy way of doing it. Something you know is reasonably parallel, which this bit of aluminium will be. There's enough clearance on the bolt holes so that we can just push it tight up against there. That's flat up against that face. That's flat up against that face. And it's going to give an average out where it's going to be very, very near. I mean, it is only a, a big old vase. It's nothing sort of super critical. You know, just happen to have a piece of aluminium that's the right sort of size. You could even use a, bit, a piece of plain wood to be reasonably accurate right so now we need to find a decent cut out of go in there the big gnarly one run it nice and slow and just dress that face up going that way now we're going to be going that way with a job which is conventional milling you don't want to be doing clay milling on something big and nasty like this Carry on, play. 
time will it? Right, I'm quite happy now I've got that nice and flat. What I need to do is square this bottom bottom shoulder up. Right, I put another 5 thou cut on that face, but I put a 25 thou cut on the base, see how that performs. No, I climb the lid, and it's actually cutting better at climb the lid. Slow the feed rate down a little bit. With having the inverter on this now, I can, I can play with the spin speed until I get into the field. See, it's cutting nice. There are various charts available, but for a small machine like this, I found trying an error. It feels like it works. Just go with it, and that's got a lot of vibration there. It's cutting nicely. It's not getting hot. One thing I have done, done is covered down behind the mill just for the cast irons. Cutting John going down onto the onto the feed screw. Horrible stuff it is. Settling for that. And I've taken enough off so we've got a nice square corner in there and a flat face so the jaw will bolt on nicely. It's point just taking any more off. That's there, yeah, that's just where it's been used under a vice door in. And you can see the two holes there, the two broken studs there. I'll try and get them out. I could drill two of that one, but I might as well remove them. Then in the future, if somebody wants to put standard face draws back on, they'll be able to go. Now we need to pick up the centre of that stud and basically I'm just going to eyeball it. I do a lot of broken stud removal and this method will work. We only need a centre punch mark right in the middle. Move it across. And that looks pretty good to me. That's actually a sharp and top, ideal for getting a nice fine mark. Then we'll go in with a proper centre punch. Right, and that's, that looks good. I'm going to drill this out and I'm going to use a left hand drill. You often find using a left hand drill that it will grip and screw the stud out. Not always, but quite often. Right, that's the left hand drill, quite a strange looking creature. And I can assure you that they're very strange to sharpen. Anyway, we'll give it a try and see if we can get this stud out. A cordless drill is the weapon of choice. Holding it as square as you possibly can. It's got a hole in there, it's not going to come out in there. Not going to give in easily. At least it's in the middle. I think it's a drill all the way through if you can. You see how we're drilling the stud because it's nice and hard as opposed to the soft cast iron. Right, that's gone through. So now we know all the way through. I'll try and ease out in there, but I've certainly got my doubts. Of course, my good easy outs are at work. Let's see what else I can find. 
Right, that's a, that's a Torx bit which should get a decent grip in there, we'll give it a try. What you don't want to do is snap that off in there. If you snap it off in there then we'll have a little bit of a challenge. Right, that's tight, that bastard, really tight. It does not want to clear. Right, we'll take this back out. I'm going to try a little bit of heat around here, just see if that'll help it. Heat, but this will help. Notice we're not heating the stove up, we're heating this along the metal up. So it's a big chunk of metal, the heat off the set, even better. Give it a try. Right, Oh yes, right. Right, there's one. I'd put up a little bit of a fight, it wasn't as easy as it might have been, but it's it's out and I've done no damage. So Bruce Witham in Australia, if you're watching that. That's what I call it, get her out.